Hi, I'm Haley Ann, back with this week's entertainment news. The most prestigious international film festival opened last week as the 68th Cannes Film Festival brought together indie movie makers and mega celebrities in France. The 12 day festival this year has a mix of documentaries, artsy dramas like Standing Tall and Irrational Man, and blockbuster movies like Pixar's Inside Out and Mad Max Fury Road. It takes place at Cannes, a swanky city on the French Riviera that's luxurious enough for the James Bond to stroll down the beach. The biggest honor at the event is the Palme d'Or, which is awarded to one feature-length film and one short film. Fashionable stars walked the red carpet, like Charlize Theron, Zoe Kravitz, Naomi Watts, and Natalie Portman. I'm joy. This is sadness. That's anger. What? This is disgust. From artistic films to art, Pablo Picasso's La Femme de Algier fetched a record $179 million, becoming the most expensive art ever sold at auction. The Spanish artist was one of the most influential painters of the 20th century, co-founding the Cubist movement. Cubism bends reality into twisted shapes that would make your geometry class teacher pull their hair out. As for Picasso's Les Femmes d'Alger, which means woman of Algiers in French, it's not the most expensive art sold anywhere, just the priciest sold at auction. The highest honor belongs to Paul Gauguin's Nafea Fa y Poipo, which is Tahitian for When Will You Marry? It sold for a whopping $300 million last February in a private sale. In second place is The Card Players by Paul Cezanne, which was sold for $274 million, followed by the third place, Mark Rothko, painting number six, violet, green, and red, which earned $186 million. The Picasso painting is fourth for all-time priciest painting, and in fifth place is Jackson Pollock's $165.4 million, number five, 1948. Break, please to the Mega musical ensembles made headlines last week, as the Vegas Rock and Rio gave Coachella a run for its money with an all-star lineup. And Taylor Swift assembled a superhero team of musicians for her long-awaited Bad Blood video. The Brazilian-produced Vegas Festival was a wacky spin-off of the huge 10-day Rio de Janeiro event that inspired it. Metallica serenaded newlyweds with Master of Puppets, Linkin Park busted out some gnarly rap rock, No Doubt left no doubt about its popularity, and the Deftones turned eardrums tone-deaf blasting its alternative metal. Even Bruno Mars and Taylor Swift joined the hodgepodge of musical madness for Rock in Rio's second weekend. Speaking of Swift, she's certainly keeping busy, because the country star turned pop icon spent all week teasing her upcoming Bad Blood music video, which has an edgy comic book style vibe full of alter ego identities. Swift brought together everyone from Zendaya and Paramore to Kendrick Lamar and Lena Dunham for this amazing lineup. American Idol will be eliminated after the 2016 season, but the long-running talent competition show will go out with a bang by bringing back past stars and judges. After debuting in 2002, American Idol quickly became the number one series on TV for eight seasons and was even nicknamed Fox's Death Star for its ability to crush rival shows. The singing competition show peaked in 2006 with about 38 million viewers during its finale, but has lost ratings almost every season since. This year was Idol's least popular season ever, and now the once unbeatable juggernaut will take a bow after its 15th season in 2016. Jennifer Lopez, Keith Urban, and Harry Connick Jr. will judge the last season as they have for the previous two, and longtime host Ryan Seacrest will make sure the show gets a proper send-off. Blasts from the past will make surprise appearances, so expect to see popular winners and judges make a cameo. The show's original three judges were Randy Jackson, Paula Abdul, and the feisty Simon Cowell, whose sharp-tongued British wit caused as many tears as laughter. Over the years, the show has produced some major musical successes, like Kelly Clarkson, Carrie Underwood, and Jennifer Hudson. I will be right here waiting for you. 
already missing American Idol? Then you may want to check out the musical comedy sequel Pitch Perfect 2 with the best all-female a cappella group in the biz. The Bellas of Barden University are back with actresses Anna Kendrick, Rebel Wilson, and Brittany Snow making audiences roll in the aisles with their silly antics once again. When Wilson's character, Fat Amy, has a wardrobe malfunction at Lincoln Center, the Bellas are suspended and must enter the international competition to regain their status. The catch? No American team has ever won. It may not hit as many high notes as the original, but the harmony between comedy and catchy music is definitely worth checking out. If we win the world championships, will you reinstate us? If you win it, 